Who would have thought that going from 16 grams of fiber to 37 grams of fiber would make as much of a difference as it did in this study? This is phenomenal for people that are combating insulin resistance or people that are pre-diabetic or dealing with full-blown type 2 diabetes. This is really phenomenal stuff. Okay, now what this study did is it took a look at subjects that consumed 37 grams of fiber. That's not even a ridiculous amount. Okay, that's just a moderate amount of fiber. And they compared that to people that consumed 16 grams of fiber and followed what they called standard advice. So standard advice for type two diabetic. Hey, here's how much you should exercise. Hey, here's what and how much you should eat. It was standard recommendations, which are kind of funny because the results of just simply adding more fiber ended up largely overshadowing the standard advice. So let's go ahead and dive in because the study was published in the journal Science, took a look at 27 individuals. So it wasn't huge, but it was enough data to really just start driving home a point. Okay, so one group consumed 37, another group 16 grams of fiber. Well, what they found with this was that 89% of the group that ate high amounts of fiber was able to control their glucose, okay? Also, 89% of the group that ate higher amounts of fiber was able to keep their HbA1c under 7%. HbA1c is your glycolated hemoglobin. That is basically your lagging indicator of how glucose, how high glucose has been over the last 90 days. So to bring that number down a percentage point is hard because you're talking about a lot of data to obviously kind of bring down. Okay, compare that to the standard group they were able to, well, in that case, they saw 50% of that group keep their HbA1c under 7%. 90% or 89% versus 50%. That's huge, but it goes beyond just that. They found that the high fiber group ended up having a marked increase in 15 different strains of bacteria in their gut that just so happened to be correlated with the short chain fatty acids that directly impact glucose metabolism. Let me back up and explain a little bit about that, okay? Because I'm gonna reference some other studies so it all makes sense, but we have what is called the metabolome, okay? The metabolome is a bunch of bacteria that are in our microbiome that just so happen to be associated with our metabolic function. So what happens is the bacteria in our gut, specific ones, they feed on fiber, and when they feed on fiber, they produce these short-chain fatty acids. These short-chain fatty acids then influence gut hormones, literal gut hormones called PYY and GLP-1, glucagon-like peptide 1. These gut hormones actually communicate with our cells and our muscles to tell our muscles to soak up more glucose out of the bloodstream. That is why glucose can be under control so much better in people that consume the right kinds of fiber because you're feeding the microbiome. Okay, so in this particular study, they saw that 15 strains of bacteria had increased and they were 15 strains that were associated with glucose metabolism. Okay, I think I'm connecting the dots here, but it doesn't stop there, it continues on. So then when it came down to the actual numbers, the HbA1c for the high fiber group went from 8.27% down to 6.37%, almost two full percentage points. Okay, compare that to the moderate fiber group, went from 8.31 down to 7.01. Okay, still a nice decrease, but compared to just reducing or increasing fiber, that's pretty ridiculous, that's awesome. Okay, and then as far as glucose was concerned, the high fiber group was able to get their glucose down to 114 compared to the regular group without the fiber or as much fiber went down to 124. Okay, again, it doesn't sound like much, but considering the only thing changing is adding more fiber, that's crazy. But here's the real kicker, weight loss, they went from 151 pounds to 145 pounds on average with the high fiber group. They went from 152 pounds to 150 pounds in the standard group. So there was more fat loss that occurred too. So not only a metabolic effect, but an actual physical body composition effect too. Let's dive more into this, okay? There's a couple of different factors that you can bring into the equation to even get more out of this, okay? 
Yes, that made a big difference. You wanna lose more weight, you wanna be able to impact glucose even more. Here's a couple more things. Okay, increasing protein intake and eating your protein first, even before your fiber. Okay, remember the whole glucagon-like peptide one and the PYY thing that I talked about? When you consume protein, you also increase GLP-1. So protein and fiber combined are a GLP-1 match made in heaven that not only satiates you, but modulates glucose tremendously. And if you are stumped on what kind of protein to even have, I put a link down below to make it easy for you. That's the one that I use when I'm in a pinch. It's Sun Warriors Active Line, and they are utilizing a pea protein alongside a pumpkin seed protein, which is super rich in fiber. And they also have other components to add fiber into it, not to mention they add some probiotics and enzymes into the effect to make it better on the gut and also help stabilize your gut microbiome. So that link is down below. You don't have to use them, but that is the shake that I use because I feel like it's a whole food shake. I don't feel like I'm just consuming some random protein with a bunch of garbage and artificial stuff in it. I feel like, I'm, hey, I'm actually getting pumpkin seeds. I'm actually getting like whole food that has fiber in it too. I recommend you go for the chocolate. I'm not much of a vanilla guy, but my wife loves the vanilla. So totally up to you. So that link is down below in the description and you'd wanna have that kind of protein shake before you go out to dinner or before you go and have a higher carbohydrate meal to kind of modulate the glucose, but better yet, combine it with some fiber. Although it has a bunch of fiber in it, so you're kind of good. Either way so that link is down below so by stacking the protein first and then the fiber that's very interesting but what's another piece that we can look at well cool new news 2021 study that took a look at omega-3s whether you get them from fish oil or you get them from ALA even from plant sources profound effect this study was published in the journal gut microbes and it took a look at 69 people they found that when subjects consume 500 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids, omega-3 supplementation, it had a comparable effect to 20 grams of pure inulin prebiotic fiber. Whoa, we are now learning that fats influence the microbiome. It remodeled the microbiome and guess what? Influenced, you guessed it, the metabolome, the specific area of the microbiome that facilitates how we use glucose and fatty acids. So what are we putting together here? High fiber, high protein on a priority totem pole high up on the list, okay? As far as fats are concerned, the more that we can increase our omega-3 fatty acids and potentially decrease our omega-6s, we might have a positive impact on the gut microbiome as well. And I'm not trying to say that omega-6s are terrible, okay? They're going to come into your diet. I'm not one of these guys that says all seed oils should 100% be out of your diet. I firmly believe that like, hyper-processed, super high-heated, hexane-contributed seed oils should be out of your diet. That stuff's garbage. But getting some natural seed oil from a couple sunflower seeds now and then and a cashew isn't going to send you to the grave. Okay, but I do think the more that you can balance with high omega-3s, you can probably see some good result coupled with the high fiber and the high protein when it comes down to your glucose metabolism. So 37 grams of fiber, that's our target. I'll see you tomorrow.